The year was 1954. With their sturdy, broken-down microphones, they were headed for greatness in the American West. Jack and Ron in the morning. If you don't laugh like this, you're probably normal. The following entertainment special contains mature subject matter. Parents may consider some of the program content unsuitable for children. Parental discretion is advised. The bad boys of radio. Here's Jack and Ron. Hey, welcome to Monday, August 14th in the year 2023, the year of our Lord. Uh, it's Jack Dam Elliott, Ron Dam Williams. We're here at Othello's Italian Restaurant as we are each and every Monday doing this live, live, I point out, number one video podcast in America, live from Othello's. And it's also featured not only on the Jack and Ron Facebook page, but also on the Jack and Ron show on our YouTube channel. So you can see it in two places at once, if you'd like. And also, of course, all the audio from this podcast will be downloaded, uploaded, whatever you call it. It'll be thrown onto the uh, other podcast sites uh, in the next day or so. That would include iHeart Media Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, TuneIn, Spreaker, Deezer. There's so many. If there's one out there, by God, we're on it. It's like a like a rash. Yes. <laughs> We're like a rat all over keeps, everything, man. We keep spreading, yeah. man. We keep spreading. Uh, right. By the way, want to remind you to go to our website, jackandron.com. That's J-A-C-K-A-N-D-R-O-N.com. Let me give it to you again. J-A-C-K-A-N-D-R-O-N.com. Go to jackandron.com, won't you? Come on, just go there and let us know you went. And uh, also, thanks to the people at Othello's here for letting us come in every week and tear this place up. They've got two locations. This one in historic downtown Edmond at 1 South Broadway. And they have one on Campus Corner in Norman. And, uh, you know, a few weeks ago here at the Edmond location, they had an Othello Sicilian wine dinner, a chef's taste of Sicily. And I came to that, and oh, my God, it was phenomenal. Guess what? They did it in Edmond. Now they're going to do it in Norman. So if you want to get on board, it's coming up Tuesday, August 29th at 6.30 p.m., Campus Corner in Norman. That's Tuesday, August 29th, Othello's in Norman. Get signed up for the Othello's Sicilian Wine Dinner. Oh, you will not be disappointed. All right. There's a lot of drinking, too. That's all right. Yeah, it's like good because there's a separate wine matched up with every uh, element, every course of the uh, incredible dinner. And that was like six or seven courses. So six or seven wines. Daddy was happy. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, I tell you what, something else this weekend, my man, I don't know how uh, it fared at your house or Richard at yours when they started uh, airing NFL football. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That started was... with Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm thinking, what's that, that Deuce? Deuce. Uh, yeah, that, that guy is going to be... Big time star. I think he could he be. He's going to be a big, big time star. But I, it was, I, I was over to my my brother's house for a little while, and it was all I could hear was uh 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 uh, uh, -uh. uh, -uh. Yeah. nope nope. And I said, well, you know, with this college football coming on, and that's 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 the pros. Uh uh nope. But they have more than one TV, so that settles that in. And that, that oh, it was somebody else in the household who wasn't looking forward to football. Yeah, I think it was his wife. His wife. Okay. <laughs> hey, by the way, we got to thank Flash Hauler, major sponsor of this podcast, the number one video podcast in America. Flash Hauler, organization that moves stuff for you, much like Uber moves people. Mm. They transport merchandise, and they do it all over the state. And it doesn't matter what it is you want to move. And they'll do it fast. They've got drivers all over the city, all over the state. And they've now hooked up with who? Hey, mom and dad's house. Mom and dad's, you know what? Mom and dad, maybe they want to go ahead and downsize a little bit. Maybe they want to take take uh, some time away. Maybe, you know, go on a cruise or whatever the case may be. Uh, you want to put that, uh, that that stuff up? Well, mom and dad's house, they, they'll find some storage for you. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. And uh, closing within two weeks at fair market as is value. They, that's the winning program that they have. 30 days extra time after closing. Yeah, if you're selling your home or whatever, great. Zero closing costs, zero moving costs, zero repairs or cleaning. And they take care of liquidating a lot of your personal items that you no longer want, but somebody else could use. That's mom and dad's store, man. Yeah. Mom and dad's all. house with flash all Yeah. Up. Here, you want the info, all the info, all the dirt, all the info, the inside stuff, because they've got service providers that can do everything for you. Go to flashhauler.com. That's F-L-A-S-H-O-L-R. 
dot com. F L A S H O L R dot com. Flashholler dot com. Okay, a lot of things coming up on this. I, I mean, really, I know at the outset of the show, it's always like, okay, guys, get through it. Tell us all that stuff, and then get to the meat of the matter. We'll do it in a moment. We've got dumbass joke of the day coming up. Uh, email mm. Roy, the movie guy. Uh, sleazy, trashy showbiz report. News of the I'll be damned, and so much more, including. As we kick off each week the show with two tough trivia. All right, my friend. This one's going to be easy for a lot of people. Oh, yeah? Button mushrooms. I believe that's pronounced criminy mushrooms. Yeah. And portobello mushrooms. Uh-huh. What's the connection? Uh, one's bigger than the other. They're yeah. both edible? That's, well. That's, that's yeah, good, that, too. But that's not the connection. See, I'll bet Tammy, who uh, runs the show here, Ed Othello's probably would know that because oh. they, she does a lot of Italian cooking with various mushrooms. Well, when you when you find out what it is, you're going to say, really? So are portobello mushrooms the parent of the button mushroom? Because portobello mushrooms are larger, much larger than button, right? Yeah. That's, anybody that's else? Button, button and, anybody? And, anybody? And that, but it's, it's criminy mushrooms as criminy, well. Criminy, okay, so well. Just, just hang on until the end of the program, folks. We'll give you the <laughs> interesting answer. All right. One of the other things we always do at the outset of the show, asinine trivia. Trivia is so easy, it's asinine. We used to have radio station personnel come to us and say, Hey, uh, Jack and Ron, I've got this big prize to give away on the show, and I want you to come up with a big, big contest to make it sound like you're giving away, you know, a hot air balloon ride to New Mexico. When in reality, they're giving us a 5% discount coupon on a pencil. So we came up with Asinine Trivia to kind of get back at them. You know, if, you know, I, I, I know we do this, but each time you do that, it just reminds me of the real tough times we had. I mean, tough dealing with yeah. stuff like that. Folks, I promise you don't know what we went through. I yeah. promise you. You'll never understand. You'll never experience it because, you know, we experienced it firsthand. And there were just so many times where they would come to us with things that you just shook your head, walked away, and said, where in the hell did that individual <laughs> come from? How'd they get in the business? So we play asinine trivia just for fun with Richard, our producer. Here we go, Richard. You ready? Yes, sir. Question one, name one thing you might purchase at Dairy Queen. Ice cream. There you go. Ring that bell. Is it ice cream? Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been to Dairy Queen. Number two. Come on now, Richard. How many eggs are in a dozen? Twelve. Got it. Finally, number three. Name the two guys who have won more broadcast awards than any other broadcasters in Oklahoma. Mm. And who often smear sour cream on their buttocks just before dancing with a Taco Bell chalupa in their pants and a tiny marshmallow in each nostril. Good. And who also... <laughs> Don't perform the number one video podcast in America. Good God, Jack these and Ron. <laughs> you got it, Jack and Ron. Woo. Go to, What's wrong with this? Shower after. Yeah, that. messy. That's kind of yeah. smelly yeah. and all. Oh, ole, <laughs> ole, ole for sure. Hey, here's something I found over the weekend that I thought might be interesting because we've been experiencing some pretty warm temperatures today. Not the case here in Oklahoma City. It's only going to be in the 80s. But prior to today, uh, we've had some. Triple digit days, quite a few of them, as a matter of fact. It's been so hot this summer that some watermelons are turning into deadly, ticking time bombs. Ah, uh, yes. The heat can cause fruit inside to ferment. And if that happens, you'll see a frothy foam bumbling out of the watermelon. Kind of complicated, but basically the watermelon explodes. Boom! Oh, my! Oh, my! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it to the point where you can go out to the big watermelon patch and just see, you know, exploding watermelons all over the place? It's like the fireworks on the yeah, 4th of July. That's what I'm talking they about. They say a fermenting watermelon is the ideal environment for toxic pathogens, too. Oh. Including botulism, E. coli, and salmonella. And if enough gas is produced in the process, it can cause the watermelon to explode. Wow. So they say to avoid this problem, uh, keep your watermelons in the fridge once you uh, bring them home. Don't let them sit out on the porch when it's 105 uh, degrees. I'm just thinking, what about the watermelons out on the field? That's I mean, what if you I've got, wondered. If you've got it, if, take it home, put it in the refrigerator. Well, yeah, you're going to do that. But what about if you say don't put it out on the patio? What about it's out there on the ground? I I, agree. I, I can see pow, 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 
are like so somebody's. You're you know, out there on the vine. What if like you're, a mortar shell? Because but, you know they grow watermelons all over the country. From yeah. what I understand. Yeah. What about in Phoenix, where it was a uh, hundred and eighteen Ru- degrees a couple of days? Hey, right here. What about Rush Springs? Oh, the yeah. watermelon festival and everything Ooh. down there. You know, it was a bang. <laughs> yeah, it was a big bang of a job. They uh, so anyway they they warn you against leaving your watermelon out there in the heat for too long a period of time. Do you ever do that deal where you take a watermelon, you bore a hole in it, and then you pour like tequila in there or vodka or some, and let the watermelon absorb it for uh, about a couple hours? Couple hours. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted you, you to make could, sure we we're all we, on the same page. We used to go to. Uh, uh, the zoo sometimes, and you'd see people bringing their their food in, man. <laughs> sure. And, and I, I'd look, and uh, I said, "That's an abnormally long straw." Yeah. <laughs> this person <laughs> has what? What is that? And they say, "Hey, Ron, come on over." And I said, "Okay, man, it was good." Number one, it was hot, and this was cold, and it, it was good. <sighs> yeah. That, wow. That's, why don't we, we ought to do that one day, man? Just just bring not a big one. But a small watermelon, yeah, and with a couple of big straws in exactly. it. Exactly. Really, you're going to see a Jack and Ron you've never seen before, or if you have seen him before, you were sworn, sworn to secrecy. We'll we we'll release you from your secrecy. <laughs> I, know, I just got this update on. Uh, yeah. This is like breaking news. Okay. Okay. Michael Orr, remember him? The vic- the, the, the the subject of the movie. Blindside. Oh, they, they, yeah, they had him on television a couple of days ago. Man. Oh, did they? Yeah, where he says that the uh, his alleged adoption was a lie. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Oh, yeah, he well. has his, he has his own book out now where he's telling the whole really? story. Yeah, he, he was he was. They were pointing at him. Oh, what a lucky guy you are! Taken from the ghetto, they they treated you like a pet, and they even influenced the college you went to. The the, the professional team you went to and he said eh, man, man didn't that, happen that no. line that line that didn't happen that Woo, way that's not good is it uh not for them no but of course <laughs> they've sold the book they've already had the motion picture so they've you, made what they yeah, needed off of it yeah. it's, it's all now now the I, only I, thing they might that? put out another book now he, he can do that he can put out another book and say something else about it well uh would you call that just embellishing a few things or would you just call that outright lying <laughs> just a well, th- just a question. When you say the adoption was a lie, yeah, yeah. You know, what, 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 what state was this in? Wasn't he in Tennessee? Yeah, I think it's something like that. All right, you you go down there. You're a white couple, and you got this big old black guy saying, <laughs> "I want to. They want to adopt me. We want to adopt him." And you, see. <laughs> See how long that that case takes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we we'll need you guys to meet with with some type of specialist before we uh, uh, even try to approve this. And if I'm not mistaken, I know I'm not. If uh, if the movie was true to, uh, it, it, you know, in uh, its message, that family owned like a boatload of Taco Bell restaurants. Isn't that where they got all their money? Uh, they own like thirty six Taco Bells. That, or some that, such I'm, I'm not sure of that, yeah. but I do know they they had a lot of cash. Then they had, then that was in real life. They actually owned that. Yeah, they all those. They had a lot of cash, but again, it makes you want to go back sometimes and think about some of the uh, autobiographies or biographies that you see on television and the movies and mm-hmm. wonder how much of this is a lie. I, I mean, how much they, is real? Yeah, how, how much? Yeah, how much of this? I mean, did Lincoln really get shot in the head? Did he really? <laughs> <laughs> and what about Kennedy? Yeah, yeah, you, same thing. Yeah, the same thing. And, and the and the rumors about Elvis that he's still alive somewhere on some island or something. Remember, you know, yeah. you know? Remember, how much of what we feed you? I say we, <laughs> the, the media. How, how much of that is really true? How much well, do you really remember? Believe? One time they claimed Paul McCartney was dead back in like 1960. Yeah, I remember or that. I remember that. Paul McCartney seems to be alive and well and still concert touring. So good for him. Yeah, that's good. And you know, how many people really believe that that you know Trump is sane? Look, let's move on. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I've I've, I've just watched the. Uh, did, 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 did you believe he's sane? Yeah. Uh, now, no, that's did, did you did you remember the uh, watch the? I think it was the Iowa. Uh, I saw some of it. Yeah, yeah the Iowa yeah, yeah, together. DeSantis was there, and some of the other candidates mm-hmm. were there, and they were you know DeSantis was over there cooking pork chops <laughs> and all this other kind of stuff. So uh, Trump comes in in his plane, and they do a 
a hard bank. Oh, cool. So everybody yeah. can sees. see. Yeah. The word Trump on the side of yeah. the plane. Yeah, and I'm just saying, you know. <sighs> He's a you, showman. Yeah, that yeah, but not a president. <laughs> I'm so, I, I know this is supposed to be a Republican state, okay? We have a Republican governor now. They're working out for you. Anyway, at this, <laughs> at this particular... Locally voted for him. What's that? The metro area was blue, wasn't it? The metro uh, yeah, area was yeah, more I, blue I than think red? Yeah, I, I think you're correct. You might be right. Yeah, I think there probably only two areas, maybe uh, Oklahoma County and uh, Tulsa. Yeah. But at any rate, uh, uh, you, somebody want to catch that? Anyway. Oh, phone's ringing down there? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> hey, we got they, stuff they to they get They want to take us off the air? What do you mean? <laughs> I'd kick those guys out of that restaurant yeah. if I were you. I'm coming down there, dog on it. All right, we got to get to some audio because we collect a bunch of great audio over the you know course of the weeks and whatever. Uh, and we're finally starting to generate some interest in the Jack and Ron private phone line, the Jack and Ron hotline. The number for you to call is 405-509-5030. Could you repeat that? I will. 405-509-5030. 405-509-5030. Call any time, day or night. Get it off your chest. Yeah. So here's one of the voice messages we received last week from a lady who feels a little ashamed of herself. Go ahead and check this out. Yeah, I have an apology and kind of a confession I want to make. I have a bad habit of going into my husband's wallet and sneaking out money and sneaking around like I really don't trust him. And it's really something I have a lot of problems with. And it's an apology I've made for, but it's something that it's just so hard for me to to keep from doing, uh, and it really just bothers me. Mm. And I really want to try to stop it, but just saying I'm sorry doesn't seem like enough. But it's just the way I feel. Well, they say sorry seems to be the hardest word. Mm. Anyway, what do you think? I mean, she's oh, going into her husband's wallet, taking money. My money. And he's probably thinking to himself, man, what did I do last night that I didn't realize I dropped 50 bucks somewhere? Or, or he's you know, saying, one more time, baby, go in my wallet one, <laughs> one more time, time and see what happens. <laughs> see well, what happens. Ma'am, thanks for sharing that with us. And you yeah. can do the same by calling our phone number, 405-509-5030. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the get it off your mind line, if you like. Like yeah. her, she remains anonymous. We don't have caller ID, so we have no idea who called. There you go. We don't know who she is. We just know she wanted to get it off her chest, get it off her mind. And I think it's, you know, to some degree, it's uh, honorable that she did that. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Because everything is anonymous, let's let's get some politicians calling in here. Sure. You don't have to worry about a thing. We And if you're just, you know, a little shy, you can, you can go ahead and try to. And to disguise your voice and to do whatever is necessary. Right. But uh, now, now is the time for people to just, you know, come on out. I'm, I'm tired of being surprised. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time. All yeah. right. Now is also the time we take a quick break. Uh, a little commercial timeout. Don't go away because we got news of the I'll Be Damned sleazy, trashy showbiz. Email coming up. Roy the movie guy. Try Bond and a whole other bunch of crap. It's a that big we know show, about. man. It's yeah. a big show. It's a monster of a show. Yeah. The number one video podcast in America. We're a global, coast to coast, worldwide. It doesn't get any better than this. And we'll be back in just a flash. Hang on. Hey, Jack, BK, I need some wings. Are you guys up there? Affirmative. Your backup is cloud-based. It's all on the cloud nowadays. That's funny. But do you guys have the wings? Winger, Jack. Winger. Winger. Hey, they had a couple of big hits back in the 80s, remember? Winger, big hair. Great wings don't just fall from the sky. They come from Louie's, where we're preparing food fresh daily. Come try one of our great new sandwiches. Or wings with any of seven delicious sauces. Louie's. We're in your neighborhood. We've got this down to a science. Over. Yeah, we're just not up here winging it. Hey, Al, I thought we were meeting at Othello's. Hey, Jack, I am at Othello's. Well, I'm looking around, and I don't see you. Well, wait, are you at Othello's in Edmond? No, I'm at Othello's in Campus Corner in Norman. Oh, great. Well, fortunately, both Othello's have great Italian food. They sure do, and I'm having the baked ziti. Ooh, I'm having chicken marsala. Let's continue with the meeting. Yeah, sure thing, over the phone, but I need one thing. What's that? Uh, your credit card number, because you're buying. Othello's Italian Restaurant on Campus Corner in Norman and in downtown Edmond. 
You bought it online, and now you need to haul that big couch. Flash hauler it. Auto washer or dryer and need to transport it from the seller's location to yours? Flash hauler it. Have office furniture to move across town? Flash hauler it. Car breakdown and you need a tow? Flash hauler it. Anytime you need furniture or appliances moved or need a tow, flash hauler it. Haul it, tow it, deliver it with Flash Hauler. Download the Flash Hauler app free. Do it now. Flash Hauler. All right, Flash Hauler, great organization, great company. We tell you about them each and every week. Big supporter of this podcast, uh, Flash Hauler at F-L-A-S-H-O-L-R dot com. All right. Uh, they do great things. What's up? Okay. You hear uh, the phone ring? Yeah. Look, the, the, the number you want, folks, is 405-509-5030. That's how you reach Jack and Ron directly. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. See, some people think if they call the restaurant, they'll get to talk to us, but we don't have a direct feed or a phone up here from that line. So call our number, 405-509-5030. Meanwhile, let's tell you more about Flash Holler, this organization that is probably, it's right now the game changer in the moving industry. They are they're outstanding. You have no clue until you use them as to how much better they are than all the other services around. Oh, yeah, save that back pain and everything else. You know, I'm getting a, a new rug for my bedroom. All right. Oh, yeah. And I, I looked around my bedroom and I said, well, there's a chest, there's a file camera, and there's the bed. And I said, you know, I don't want to move all this crap. You know who can move it for you? Flash Hauler. Flash Hauler can do they, it. They, 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 they can move from house to house, but they can move from room to room as well, which is what I'm going to need. Yeah, they Perfect. have it. Flash Hauler has all these service providers all over the city. They have drivers all over the city. If you want to pick up a washer and dryer at one location and move it to another, Contact Flash Hauler. They can do it usually in a matter of hours, as opposed mm. to a lot of the big box stores. When you buy something, they'll say, oh, yeah, we'll move it for you. But it's going to be four or five days before we can do it. And you sit there you saying, know, hey, look, I got a hamper full of dirty clothes. I got to do some laundry. And they're saying, well, go down to the laundromat, and then we'll get your washer and dryer to you when we're damn good and ready. <laughs> but, no, that's not the way to do it. Call no, Flash Hauler, for, man. Heck, for, for heaven's sakes, no, you don't do that. And plus, they've hooked up with mom and dad's house now. And that's a great service where they help uh, citizens, you know, a lot of times senior citizens who want to move out of their big home and downsize, get rid of some of the furniture. Yeah, they just don't want to hold an estate sale and do all that. Flash Hauler helps put it all together and move them into a new dwelling and uh, set them all up and take care of, you know, uh, selling off all their other goods. So go ahead and call Flash Hauler. Uh, go to the website, flashholler.com. And at the, before we get out of here, uh, later on, we'll tell you about mom and dad's house. All right. All right. Here we go. Uh, we've got uh, email, and let me go ahead and give it an official introduction. Jack and Ron email from the email bag of me of mail. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that I was just great. made that up. Yeah, I can tell. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, here you go. You know, I was talking uh, just a moment ago. Uh, sort of, you know, lightly uh, off the cuff about politics and things like that. Uh, you would be surprised at how early our young people are exposed to politicians. Is that a good thing or not? They're banning all the stuff around the world right now. Right. It might be good to ban some of uh, these ads that our kids have to watch, uh, according to this gentleman, Dear Jack and Ron. Ooh. My 13-year-old is asking questions about political intrigue. Sean says he thinks they are all lying just for power and money. He was even comparing them to the Sopranos, that type of attitude. This is what he Pretty says. Pretty smart kid. Yeah, this is what he says. And, well, you know, they had the Sopranos uh, back on HBO during the, during the summer. The, I don't know if it's still on, but they were running the series. I watch in, it all the time. Yeah. I go back and watch it. Uh, anyway. Uh, he said, this is what he says he and a lot of other friends he has are thinking and that folks aren't as stupid as people think they are. I don't want to get political, Jack and Ron, but he raises points that I can't answer. Can you help? Well, yeah, of course, they're all a bunch of crooks. All they do is lie. <laughs> Let's face it. I mean, if they're <laughs> if you're a politician, you know, you've lied to the public at one time or another. Yeah. And maybe do it repeatedly. It's all part of the game. And the bad part about it is a lot of times we don't discover what a liar you are until you're already in office. Yeah. And then we then then we feel like fools for putting you there. 
And then we look in the mirror and go, oh, wow, what were you thinking? Hey, by the way, I finally got a name pop up on my screen. Mary Ann Miller is watching. Now, you said you saw my wife's name pop yeah, up. Yeah, right there. And, and, right and there, there. Anybody else? Because that's the only name that uh, That's up. the only name I have as well. We've talked to Richard about this, our producer. We're having some kind of algorithm problem. I don't know. It's almost like uh, like our, our Facebook page has some sort of hemorrhoid or something because we are not getting all the names of the people who are watching and people who are submitting uh, hellos and uh, good luck, guys. I uh, hope your life continues. Hey, you, if you can't reach us this way uh, and you have a phone in your hand, obviously, because you're sending us this message, just go ahead and call us at 405-509-5030. Just, just, that's, just, that's probably the best way to do it anyway. All right. Now, speaking of names, we got a guy named Roy ah, yes. who handles all the movie info for us. Roy, the movie guy, he's here this week. What do you got, Roy? Thank you, guys. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Now let's talk about what's opening up this weekend at the box office. Okay. We have two new releases opening up this weekend. The first one is Blue Beetle, starring Cholo Maradueña, Bruna Marquezine, and George Lopez. Jaime Riaz suddenly finds himself in possession of an ancient relic of alien biotechnology called the Scarab. When the Scarab chooses Jaime to be his symbiotic host, he's bestowed with an incredible suit of armor that's capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers, forever changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero Blue Beetle. Hmm. Rated PG-13 with a runtime of two hours and seven minutes long. Hmm. Up next, we have Strays, the new comedy with the voice talents of Will Ferrell and Jamie Foxx. Abandoned on the mean streets by his low-life owner, Doug, a naive but lovable dog named Reggie, falls in with a fast-talking, foul-mouthed Boston Terrier and his gang of strays. Oh, Determined to seek revenge, Reggie and his new canine pals embark on an epic adventure to get him home and make Doug pay for his dirty deed. <laughs> Rated R, with a runtime of one hour and 33 minutes long. And that's a look at what's opening up this weekend at the box office. Back to you guys in the studio. You know, that yeah. one sounds... Thank you, my and, man. Hey, guys. Hope everybody had a great week. Okay, yeah, okay. You, we did. We had, it was fine. Uh, as, as goofy as that sounds, I actually think it sounds pretty good. The dog. The oh, yeah. Dogs, I, 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 saw, I saw some of that, man. And, yeah, you know, and they talk, the, they, they talk the talk. These are strays. What do they want to stand up? You know, not <laughs> poodles. They, they talk the language of the street. Now, these aren't no damn Pomeranians. No, There's not no lasso not. opso. These are strays. <laughs> You know, <laughs> these are mixed breed dogs and they, uh, they let you know it. Well, I, I look forward to that one. That sounds pretty good. All right. Yeah. We got some audio we got to get. Oh, to. by the way, I, I want to tell you this. Uh, what was that about that Dracula movie? Yeah. All right. Folks, if, uh, I, I believe it's Paramount, um, I think, or Amazon, whatever you can see that movie. I'll tell you how bad it is. It's streaming now. Already. It yeah, opened last already. week. Yeah. It's uh, just opened and now it's streaming. Yeah. They only made $16 million. I yeah. think for the first week, not enough. No, not I, I, I doubt it had to. You can't pay much. the cameraman for that. I was going to say <laughs> it had to cost more than that to make it. All right, we got some great audio for you. You know, over the years, we have collected. Now, this is really fun stuff. I, I think it just—it's funny as hell to me. Over the years, we've collected <laughs> odd audio clips. One such clip was produced by some guy we don't even know where. We used to get his material. He allowed us to play it. Uh, he did these fake commercials for a place called Sid's warehouse and allegedly uh, some guy named sid owned this giant factory warehouse that sold everything from you know, lawnmowers to washing machines and there were a bunch of these fake commercials but i have two of them sort of back to back one was a giant grand opening sale mm. the second commercial <laughs> is a help pay sid's doctor bills for his open heart surgery so here we go listen to these two sid's warehouse commercials Last night at 10 p.m., Sid's giant factory warehouse closed its doors. This morning at 8 a.m., Sid reopened his doors to conduct business. You heard right. It's Sid's giant grand reopening. Now everyone has the opportunity to shop at Sid's and cash in on incredible deals. This Sunco two-head video cassette player was listed with the manufacturer at $299.95. Now this incredible electronic home video player is available at Sid's giant factory warehouse. Plus, this weekend, Sid announces something nobody in retail sales has ever done. If you bring in the receipt from any store, Sid will sell you the same items you bought. And if Sid doesn't have the item in stock, he'll only charge you half price on the spot. Hi, I'm Sid. I must be cracked or something. 
hurry down to the sale before they put me in a red room. Plus, during this incredible sale! Sid's Giant Factory Warehouse closes its doors every night at 10 p.m. and reopens at 8 a.m. Items listed on your receipt must be notarized and filed with the county clerk under Section 423 of the District Business Code. The pink copy of the form must then be signed by county officials, and a photocopy must be sent along with a filing fee of $35 to the office of the county clerk. There is a one-time service fee of $25 for Sid to complete the transaction. All items listed on the receipt will be sold at face value plus 15%. Please allow six to eight weeks for COD delivery plus cost. And here's commercial number two for Sid's giant warehouse. Your attention, please. A member of our community is in the hospital. In a few short hours, he'll be in triple bypass surgery. His business has brought productivity and jobs to this community for over 35 years. Now he needs your help. Announcing the SIDS Giant Factory Warehouse Pay the Doctor Sale! Yes, Sid is in the hospital and doesn't have the money to pay the incredible medical expenses! So this weekend, we'll slash prices on every item in stock and give all the money to Sid! Show Sid's bad heart that you have a good heart this weekend by purchasing incredible items like these! More made wallet size Rilo's, only $14.95. Camford's delicious cream of soup four pack, an unbelievable $3.49 per can. And road bike snow tire, set of four, slash to sell at half price, then doubled again! Hi, I'm Sid. I'm lying here wondering if this breath is the last one I'll ever draw, but I don't dwell on it because the pain is too much to bear, but I hope you enjoy the sale. Plus, all persons in attendance at Sid's giant factory warehouse! Sid's Pay the Doctor sale is based on an idea Sid had while watching TV. Sid is not actually in the hospital, nor is he dying. The references made above were all in fun. All sale prices this weekend will be higher than advertised. Sid is 32 years old and in perfect health. I love that. I, oh, I just think that's Sid. such a creative. I, I mean, you know, you hear all the different warehouse or b- big box store commercials or what have you, but those two. I mean, that, especially the pay the doctor bill and then find yeah. Sid's in perfect. Health. You know what we have to do? We have to really go back because I'm thinking there are a, there's just a ton of uh, you know bits and things like that that. Our current audience has never heard, yeah. never knew existed. Well, Richard, had had you ever heard about Sid? No. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you got to admit, it's pretty and entertaining. At first, I was still like, is that, is that just Jack Mike's voice? That's a real commercial. <laughs> Holy smokes. I mean, it's yeah. pretty, pretty funny stuff, though, at least in my, in my mind. I, I hear that and I go, damn it, that's funny. All right. Now, there's something we wanted to do it this week. We can, we can go ahead and plan to do it next week. I'll, I'll simply say this. It's a commercial that Jack and myself oh, did yes. many, many years ago. Folks, uh, if there's any way you can go ahead and record it this next week, you will need to. It, it's it's worth blackmail. It really yeah, is. We'll get, we'll get it out and we'll, uh, we'll show it to you. In fact, there were two of them. Can we play both? Yeah, let's play them both. Okay. Yeah. And you'll like it because there's video with it, too. It's not just the audio like with SIDS. But damn it, Sid's <laughs> warehouse sale, is, it's the best. All right, we've got to get to, ooh, I just noticed it's time for news of the I'll Be Damned. Come on. All right, how about this? Most people who get baptized as adults uh, try to turn over a new leaf, but not always. Some idiot broke into a church in Florida last week and baptized himself. Well. And then immediately robbed the place. Well, what a holy roller. His name is Derek Porter. He's from Georgia. Happened at a a church in Panama City Beach, Florida on Friday. He used a cinder block to smash out a window, then got into the church's baptism pool. Maybe it was hot. It's Florida, summertime. He needed to cool off, so he jumped in the baptism pool. Uh, (laughs) Claimed later he didn't remember much about the break-in, except that he was baptized, and he baptized himself. Yeah, bring that to court. Let's see that. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> One, <laughs> once he was done, he loaded a TV, computer, and other electronics into a truck along uh, with the church's money bag. The money bag. They leave that in the church? I, I was they, about to say, why would you go ahead and leave the money in, in the, the church? church. Uh, Jeez. Cops showed up before he left and arrested him for burglary and criminal mischief. They also found, believe it or not, meth. So he's facing okay. charges for that, too. Well, there you go. But I had another one here that I was going to mention. Yeah, this one isn't as interesting. Well, let us be the judge of that. Well, right. (laughs) There's apparently a new scam where thieves are replacing QR codes, replacing the QR codes at parking meters, and uh, 
and lots uh, with their codes. And they're apparently they're, they're replacing the QR codes on the meters and at the parking lots mm. with their own QR codes, codes, and then sending the money to their wallets. Huh. Yeah, I you know, mean, that, it, it sounds like that uh, they were running with you know the gas stations and other stuff. Sounds like almost the, the same thing. It does, really, with the skimmers on the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is done all electronically. Richard would probably know better than me. Not that he's involved in this, but... <laughs> I mean, because to me, it's like, okay, you got a, you got a QR code. You got to scan it, yeah. right? Dropping a and dime then, on Richard. <laughs> you scan it, and Ron, then... get your boy. Why are you trying to snitch it over? Yeah. And then you, the money gets sent to what you think is the parking meter company, but instead it's going to their wallet on their phone, right? It's all electronic. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, how did they, now how did how did they find out? Well, uh, a lot of people didn't know. Started getting a ticket. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got booted. And the, <laughs> the QR yeah, codes yeah. often send you uh, to random forms where you pay, and people just trust that it's the right portal because that's what's on the sign. Because you got the QR code and you think it's theirs. Trust in nothing authorities with my say, money. Authorities say you should use your credit cards to pay directly using the machine or meter or whatever. And if you do use a QR code, to check what URL you're sending it to. And be wary. If it's a vague URL or a shortened link, this could be a real problem for a lot of people, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think definitely. I mean, I... I just received in the mail, uh, this is from uh, the uh, Turnpike, because I was on it uh, about a week or two ago, and they sent me my bill. I, I didn't even look at it because I knew I expected it. But, you know, if they can do this for a whole state, why can't they go ahead and knock that out? I don't know. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me. That's, you mean, you got to be on your guard all the time. That's, I don't know. I have some friends that ask, Ron, you seem like you're angry at the world. Well, kind of, but the thing is, there's <laughs> there's so much that that goes on. You have to look out for over here. Somebody's always trying to skim you, scam you, or something else. Yeah, I, I get a little upset about that. Well, here's what's real interesting: is they, um, I, I get the bill in the mail from uh, the Pike Pass people too, but I've got three vehicles, and each one has a Pike Pass in it, so I get billed accordingly. But they're they're saying now that they, you know, with this new license tag. Uh, payment plan where when you go through, if you don't have a Pike Pass, it takes a picture of your tag and then they send you the bill. But now they're saying that they've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars because people with paper tags or not their tag. Yep, all yep. That, and so they're unable to even track down who the paper tag belongs to. Uh, so there's a bunch of money being lost by the Turnpike Authority. And I don't know, maybe you should just go back to having everybody have a, a Pike Pass. I like having the pass because I know I can look at my bill and I know, you know, where we traveled, how often, and keep track of it. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. I, Plus, it's uh, cheaper but, to have a Pike Pass than just using well, your I license. Do, well, I, I just I don't get on the Turnpike that that I've hardly. In fact, this was the first time I'd been on one. The first and, and last time when I saw that bill. <laughs> for, <laughs> it it uh, now it it's it's aggressively higher. It's thank like you. Almost three times higher than what it used to be. Thank you. Thank you. So I think, you know, I, I, I drive see, around, I take that, that little dirt road. <laughs> I see the signs on the turnpike. It'll, it'll say, yeah. you know, whatever distance you're traveling, it'll say, uh, without a Pike Pass, $2.65. With a Pike Pass, a buck twenty-five. And I'm thinking, I'm glad I got a Pike Pass. Because I do travel the turnpike all the time. I go to the gym every day at home every day. I take the p turnpike to the gym. It's right there off... Uh, memorial at the Kilpatrick. And uh, so I'll, I'll take it from Eastern all the way to Penn every day and then get back on at Penn and drive home to Eastern. So I'm on it every day plus many other times a day. So I just find it convenient. Although it's getting more and more crowded, the turnpike is. I think they need to add a couple more lanes. I need to build stuff a little closer to different neighborhoods. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to get on that's that a, turnpike and go that's across That's always town. a way to go. Yeah. All right, so I got one more little piece of audio for you, and I think uh, you'll enjoy this. It's a Jack and Ron classic soap opera moment. Ah. You remember we used to have people call in and share with us? Folks, you have no idea of how we kept the lid tightly screwed on in this city with things just like this, helping yes. folks out. Uh, Jack and Ron classic soap opera moment. A guy named Fred hmm. uh, found himself in a bit of a predicament due to his hot water tank going out. 
And this is oh, a, don't mention <laughs> that, man. <laughs> you just had a hot water I just, tank. My hot water tank well, just went out this weekend. I think Fred's story may have a happier ending. Let's check out Fred's story <laughs> and his wonderful predicament with the water tank. It's Jack and Ron's soap opera moment. He had sex with my mama. Why? On 98.9 KISS FM. What do you say, Fred? Go for it. All right. Well, I was actually 17 and was working at Convergis. It used to be Matrix Marketing on 19th Street and more. And was dating a girl there. And uh, her best friend was dating a guy. And we had a party after work one day. And uh, I kind of liked her friend. thought she was pretty cute and you know, unfortunately, she was dating another guy, and we went to a party, and it was actually my next-door neighbor's party, and uh, after the party, we ended up at my house. Well, uh, you know, the night went on. Next morning, uh, after, you know, we all had a little bit of fun, I woke up, and my girlfriend had to go to work, and her boyfriend had to go to work. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, all four of you were at your place. Right. And okay. you spent the night with your girlfriend, and your friend spent the night with his girlfriend, right? Right. Well, he wasn't my friend. I didn't even know him. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But they stayed, they stayed in the living room. Well, the next morning, we wake up, and you know, her, boy, her boyfriend leaves, okay. and uh, my girlfriend leaves, and the hot water tank went out in my apartment. Damn, wouldn't you know it? But we had to have a shower. Of course so you did. The maintenance, the maintenance guy shows up, gets a new hot water tank in, tells us we have five minutes of hot water. Well, this girl argues with me. Says she, she deserves the shower. Well, it's my house. I want a shower too. So we talked about it for a little while and agreed that we'd take a shower together. Wow. Just, you know, since we only have five minutes of hot water. Uh -huh. Oh, look, and, uh, how did you come to that agreement? How did you talk <laughs> her into that, Fred? Oh, it was great. It was great. Yeah. But it was it was kind of an awkward situation at first. You know, we wouldn't nobody was touching each other. It was kind of a you know trying not to look at each other, but you could you knew we were looking at each other. You know. Hell yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Let me ask you this. Did you try to represent? Oh, well, of course. Was, okay. she, was she hot? <laughs> oh, yeah, she's hot. Yeah. Oh, God. Because I, I was about to say, How you know. lucky can you go? Oh, yeah, we've only got five minutes of hot water. We'll have to shower together, and she agrees to it. All right. Well, here, oh, here's God. the funny part. Yeah. Here's right. what makes it the soap opera moment. We uh, get out of the shower and couldn't help ourselves. Went to the bedroom and uh, engaged in an all-day uh, party, I guess you could say. Mm. All day? Mm. All day long. Yeah. Okay. Well, when... Uh, both of our significant others get off work. We explained to them what happened, came right out, and we're, we're very honest about it. You're crazy. Oh, okay. You're out of nah, your nah, mind. Nah, There's a the soap opera moment. No, no, no. But no. here's the best part. Yeah? We've been married for seven years now. You're kidding. She was 19. I was 18. We just had our first child. Happily oh, married. Now, wait. Whoa. Now, the girl you showered with or the other your girlfriend? The girl that I showered with. Ah, oh, man. That's, what that's, how we, that's how we met and got together, and we've been together ever since. That's well, now, awesome. Now, how did you... Uh, how did you take care of, uh, you know, your ex and her ex? I mean, how did they react? Yeah, what to happened it? there, man? Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> so were, were they pissed off about it? I mean, what? Uh, a little bit, but yeah. what can you do? Well, so your uh, girlfriend then, that was it? She broke it off? Uh, I broke it off with her. Oh. And you and this other young lady got together. And got married. <sighs> Been uh, together every step. Isn't that sweet? That's awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. What a great soap opera moment. Yeah. It talks about the benefits of uh, staying clean. Yes, and having a bad water tank. <laughs> and being lucky. Yeah, yeah that's, very lucky. Oh, Glad man. That, that, that boyfriend wasn't slightly unstable. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm looking at the yeah, I'm looking at the fact they stayed stayed in bed, you know, all, all day. All day. You know, everybody else went to work. You guys don't have jobs? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> By the way, I'm getting names popping up on our Facebook page. But very few. And I know there are other names popping up on Ron's. We don't understand the algorithm thing here. Like my wife's name popped up on Ron's page um, or on Ron's phone. And then I had a Mary Ellen Miller and then Steve Oaks, our friend Steve, who owns Shine Time, you know, biotech company. They produce Shine Time, which we always tell you. Great stuff for your car, mm -hmm. shines your car, cleans everything in your car. You can clean the vinyl, the interior, the glass, the paint. Anything, the the wheels, whatever it is you want to clean on your vehicle, uh, Shine Time is the product. But Steve's online, but there's only those two names on my, and I know there are more people watching, oh, but they're so just not coming up on the on the screen for some reason. You know, we're going to get someone. I don't know who we. You know, first of all, maybe we could ask you know Richard to go slap some people around to find out what's going on mm -hmm. because you know Richard. Look, he seems he's a pretty good guy. He seems to be in shape. Sure, he, he can handle himself. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. Those you, you cherish those moments. I, I cherish those moments. Yeah, of course. All right. We've got to get to the sleazy, trashy showbiz report. Off we go. Drake 
ask fans to keep their bras on at a show where his 15-year-old son was in attendance. He says he's not ready to talk to him about boobies just yet. 15, man. The kid knows more than he does. Excuse me, five. Say 15. Okay, oh, five. five. I was going to say 15. Uh, I, I don't I, know I, what I, that is. You almost scared me because I was like, dude, <laughs> there's no way. 15-year-old doesn't that know. That kid is 15. He, he's about to have me have like a panic attack over here because I was like, there's no way that 15 years has passed. The, the, kid's, the kid's five. Okay. Okay, right. okay five. Sure. I'm, okay, I'll, I'll understand now I agree with Drake. Yeah. Don't talk about the boobies just yet. At no. least not with him. Uh, due to the writer's strike, I don't know, you probably noticed this already, all of the late-night talk shows are reruns and will remain so for the future. I understand they're talking about, what, January? Or something They've been like going that. on getting, months getting, already, yeah. yeah. So, uh, late man, all these guys, I, I hope they're, you know, getting checks. They They don't have to come to work. Man, that's nice. Yeah. Wow. I think due to the union agreements and what have you, I think they do get some sort of residual uh, or partial payment for their appearance, even though they're not live. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you you think all the folks out there, they've, they've got some of these ironclad. Yeah, they get these uh, agents. That yeah. Get, and you, and well, why can't we get one of those agents? Well, we need know, an agent like that who can get us. Jack and I tried to get an agent one time, and you know what? We came up empty. Yeah. We need a good agent. Anybody want to be our agent and go out there and knock on doors and tell them, hey, look, these guys are the guys you need to host that brand new network show. Okay. Oh, okay. Or your, your, your business having trouble getting off the ground. Hey, you need to check in with Jack and Ron. They will go ahead and put some afterburners on that bad boy and the there sky's the limit. Yep. Well, uh, by the way, today uh, is National Tattoo Removal Day. Did you know that? Uh, Dolly Parton has uh, some tattoos to cover up some scars. And uh, Garth Brooks, right here, Oklahoma Zone, uh, just got his first tattoo this year. I've never Wait. had one of you. Uh, no. I have no, no tattoos. No, no, if, you, if you got one, you still got it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to have it removed because yeah. I never got one. Yeah, see, me either. I, I just, you know, now, Richard has a tattoo or two. How yeah. many? Four? What yeah. gang are you in, man? No. What gang? <laughs> okay, what are your, uh, what are your have tattoos? Have you seen uh, Jay Uso's new tattoo? Uh, no. Wait yeah, a minute! I I I, I think whole, I did. He's finally got his whole back completely done. Yes, really? yes, yeah. yes. But see, those guys. I mean, he's set for life right now. He but do you think do some of that thing. is a little over overboard? I mean, getting your entire back done. I've seen people. Who I think have, I think for the, it's it's a cultural thing. Yeah. So I think it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, I think it's a part of their culture. So. Yeah. Because for some for some brothers, man, tattoos are no good. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> yours looks good, though. Oh, thank, <laughs> you, okay. thank you. Uh, Zach Bryan. Yeah, that one with the skull and crossbones that says, born to raise hell. Yeah. That's, that's a good yeah. looking one on you. I was man. thinking about getting that on my left one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm letting that alone. Uh, Zach Bryan, uh, he brought the WWE's Brock Lesnar on stage to help him sing in Minneapolis. Can you believe that? Brock Lesnar singing? No, no, yeah, <laughs> no, not, not at country? all. Huh? Is it country? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, Britney Spears has bought herself a brand new stripper pole. Oh, I saw it on video today. It popped yeah. up on my Instagram. Yeah, she was going crazy on it. It's a purple pole, purple or pink, and uh, she was going uh, buck wild yeah. on that thing. You know, I I understand <laughs> the hassle. Huh? How long did it last for? Oh, about two hours. Two hours. No, <laughs> yeah. actually, I think it was like one of those fifteen second blurbs, but it just popped up yeah. on my Instagram page. Yeah. And you know, you think about all that she went through with her, her dad had was a conservator and all of that, and then you see her doing some of the stuff she's doing now. And sometimes I, I wonder, I said, you know, maybe, maybe they let loose a little too soon. I wonder because in watching that today, I thought, girl, I mean, truthfully, you know, she used to be just a little girl who was, you know, on uh, whatever that, when, when she Disney part of the show. Disney thing. Yeah. Disney yeah. always so, corrupts the young. So now she's like, <laughs> she seems so trashy. I mean, I'm, I mean, and I'm not one to, you know, one to judge. But she just seems kind of trashy the way she dances and operates on the pole. They, first, she used to just have uh, little videos that came up with her dancing in like some skimpy outfit looking trashy. Now, the ultimate trash. She's got a pole. No, no, Jack, wait, wait, Jack wait, is wait, a wait, high, uh, yeah, I was, hard fan. I, I, I was about to say, man. I mean, uh, no, what, 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 I mean, did she have a grind going on yeah, with this? With yeah, this, it's just, with, if you see what it, color go, was she in? 
It was a leopard skin. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, hey, man, that, but to me, that's kind of uh, tiddly. Yeah, I think if you see it, you might change your mind. It, it, <laughs> but does it make you want to keep, keep watching? <laughs> <laughs> you, do, do, you, do you keep rerunning re re over, over and over and over? Yeah, yeah, sure, okay. of course. Uh, okay, well, uh, she's going to do all right. <laughs> Crazy as hell. Okay, Jeff Be Bezos is donating $100 million to the relief effort in Maui. All right. And, uh, man, I don't know if you've been watching all of that uh, with the latest newscast and what have you. That area, man, that... Uh, an historic area. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody took a blowtorch to it. And My brother-in-law and sister-in-law, Sue and Roger, got married in Lanai in uh, Maui. And uh, every year they go on their anniversary, but not this year. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's been brought up, and I'm not going to say by who, but it's been brought up that there have been some uh, high-stakes arguing and, and uh, fighting because there are some big-time people who are warning that area. I mean, that's a beautiful area, uh, where at least it was. And yeah. that, uh, that that they may find out how the fire started. Remember, at the last time we checked, uh, my goodness, how did this fire start? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think why right now that's what they're saying on this one. Yeah. Nobody and, knows. And uh, it's like, well, why didn't the, uh, the, the sirens go off? Nobody knows. Why is it a lot of the fire departments went into different neighborhoods? And guess what? The water, uh, the there was no water there at the at the uh, fire hydrant. The fire hydrant, yes. yeah. There was no water. Why is that? Nobody knows. Wow. See, there's just too many. Nobody knows for a place that is so historically valuable to that state. And I'm glad Jeff, Jeff Bezos donated so much money. One hundred million dollars. I wonder what he's going to own. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I understand, Oprah went over and yeah. wanted to know what people really needed. So she got information from different people there. And then she went to Costco and Walmart and bought them out and took it all to people. Yeah. Yeah. They, all the things they needed from diapers to toilet paper, water, all those things. You know, it's an amazing thing. Nothing against Maui or, or anything. You know, people, the people the, that were living there lost their homes, the death and everything else. But people really jumped out in a hurry for Maui. And I can remember Haiti and Puerto Rico, everybody was talk, turning around. Well, you know, they should have had everything together. It's not our fault that this yep. is that. And it's, you know, and they sent some stuff and and just unloaded it off the planes and boats, and there it is right there on the shore. There's the, the, there's a difference. Maybe you all don't say it. I do. There's a difference between how you react to tragedy to one group of people, to another group of people, or to maybe to an area. Maui is pretty doggone hot. But anyway, I've, I've got, knocked this out, and I'm done. Uh, Barbie's still on top of the box office and could become the biggest Warner Brothers movie of all time. Wow. My wife saw it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, now, what about this Barbie breaking up couples and stuff? I didn't hear about that. Oh, I heard about it. I didn't hear about it either. Oh, they, this was on the news, my man, that uh, a lot of people are breaking up and Barbie is the cause. Wow. All right. Maybe next next uh, week we'll have uh, that the answer. that a little better. Yeah. Or yeah. somebody could call us right now, 405-509-5030, and give us the information that uh, that we need. All right, you can do that at 405-509-5030. Are we having a video problem? Yeah, I think the video should be coming back up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I've been seeing uh, a big W or some letter M or something yeah. on there. Yeah, hey, I was I was thinking that w uh, again. maybe the powers that be ah, were trying to are. trying to censor us or at least censor, <laughs> could be at least censor me. All it right, won't work. <laughs> well, we got to get to this because we're running behind on time. Let's get to the dumbass joke of the day. All right. Once again, we have three very cheesy jokes. Ron gets to pick one of the cheesy jokes. So, Ron, go ahead. Get ready to pick your cheese. Here are the three jokes today. Number one, the break-in. Number two, the insurance claim. Number three, the law office. Okay, the break-in, the insurance claim, the law office. Uh, I'm remembering that story we just talked about, the guy who baptized himself, broke in the church. All right. Let's go with the break-in. Break-in, okay. Yeah. Uh, George was going to bed with his wife, and uh, good for him. Yeah. <laughs> said, uh, 
She told him she, he left the, sh the light on in the shed. So George opened the door to go turn the light off, but saw there were people in the shed in the process of stealing things. He immediately phoned the police who asked, is someone in your house? George said no, but explained the situation that there were people stealing stuff from his shed. Then he explained that all the patrols, the people at 911 said, all the patrols are busy. Nobody's available. You should just lock your door and wait till an officer is available. George said, okay. He hung up, counted to 30 and phoned the police again. He said, hello, I just called a few seconds ago uh, because there's people in my shed. And the guy says to the cops, well, you don't have to worry anymore about them because I shot them all. Then he hung up, and within two minutes, three squad cars, an armed response unit, an ambulance mm -hmm. showed up. And, of course, police caught the burglars red-handed. One of the policemen said to George, I thought you said you shot them all. And George said, I thought you said nobody was available. Hey. Hey. Thank you very much. Let me get you another one here. Yeah. A, a, a little easier to understand. The insurance agent was having quite an easy time selling Mrs. Cunningham insurance on her husband's life. She'd buy in life insurance on her husband. In fact, he thought it was almost too easy. When all the details were finalized, Mrs. Cunningham asked, Now, if my husband should die tomorrow, what would I get? And the insurance guy said that would depend entirely on how the evidence is presented to the jury. Jeez. Okay. All right. Uh, you want one more? Give it to him. All right, one more. <laughs> guy calls the law office. He calls the law office. Now, listen, come on, guys, work with me here. We're trying. We got John Bennett online here and Shelly Yancey Coleman checking it out now. Uh, it's good to see that some more people have joined in, but again, I don't have all the names up here on my phone. I don't they, know why. They, they popped up on my phone, too. <laughs> okay. Now, now, this, now the stuff is trying to work right. Okay, so the guy calls a law office. He says, I want to talk to my lawyer. The receptionist says, I'm sorry, he died last week. Next day, the same guy calls again, says the same thing. I want to talk to my lawyer. The receptionist says, I told you yesterday he passed away last week. Very next day, the same guy calls again, wants to speak to his lawyer. This time, the receptionist said, because she's getting annoyed, she says, look, I keep telling you, your lawyer died last week. Why do you keep calling? Guy says, because I just love hearing it. <laughs> now that ain't bad come on now oh lordy <laughs> i know sometimes i think i ought to drop that feature no no no, 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 no. don't no. don't do don't do that jack oh, <laughs> now, now that almost gave me validation i need to drop the damn dumbass joke of the day no no, no. all right we got to get to tribon here before we finalize things with too tough trivia tribon this is from last week where we hit you with three words and they were control, theater, and watch. Control, theater, watch. One word, I say one word, works with those three. And it's up to you to come up with that one word that works with those three. The three words again, control, theater, watch. Who came up with the answer? Was it Richard or Ron? I think it was Ron. I didn't come up with it. No? Ron, did you have the answer? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> However, you're not going to share it with us this week. Uh, wait, wait, say it again. The three words, again, were control, theater, watch. Tower. Tower is correct. Ooh. Control tower. Tower theater. Yeah, that's right, right, right down. Yeah. 23rd that's, Street. That's the thing that, that got me. I couldn't think of. I thought of radio. I said, no, that's, that can't go with that. That's good. Stuff. I got to commend you on that one. Yeah. Tower theater on 23rd Street. And then. Watchtower. All right, now we got a new one for you. You'll have seven days to think about this before we come back and give you the answer. Three words this time, door, yard, order. Oh, this is so easy. A three-legged dog with an eye patch and no tail could get it. Door, yard, yard order. Order. Door, yard, order. Come on. Anybody. I mean, come on. A monkey with no banana and a broken tail could get this one. Door, yard, order. Uh, with no banana and a broken tail, I don't think that monkey's thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, you ready? Yep. Next week, we'll give you the answer. All right. Meanwhile, we got to get back to um, Too Tough Trivia to wrap this thing up. All right, my friend. What does, or what do, uh, button mushrooms, criminy mushrooms, and portobello mushrooms 
What's the connection between all of them? I thought Richard had the best answer when he said they're all edible. Yes. Um, mine, though, I thought a portobello mushroom being bigger than the other two, that the portobello might be the parent of the other type of mushroom, the smaller ones, if there is such a thing. Well, why not the smaller ones growing up to be the big ones? I, <laughs> you got me there. Well, what is I, I'm going to give I'm going to give it to Jack because he came uh, sort of the closest. They're all the same mushroom, just oh. just at different stages of development. They're oh. all the exact same mushroom. That's what I so meant. The portobello is the exact same thing. Yeah, as a criminy and, and, and a button. button. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant. And they and they and they grow, <laughs> and as they grow, they get a new name. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Hey, we want to thank everybody for checking out the show. Sorry about some of the video being a little uh, intermittent. Uh, we've been uh, having a little problem here and there. But well, a lot of it because we went overtime, man. Again. Be, yep. Yeah. Overtime. Oh, boy, we are over. All right. We got to get out of here. We want to thank the people at Flash Holler. Flash Holler. Go to flashholler.com. We always tell you Uber moves people. Flash Hauler moves merchandise. If you need to move a couch, a sofa, a love seat, washer, dryer, whatever it is, yeah. FlashHauler.com. They've also hooked up now with Mom and Dad's House, where they help senior citizens move from their large, more uh, maintenance-needed home. You know, they got a big yard work. They move into a smaller dwelling, or they don't have all that yard work, and they want to get rid of some of the furniture. Mom and Dad's House helps with Flash Hauler. Hauling it off, <laughs> selling it off. Cleaning out mom and dad's house now. <laughs> Come on. Go. So I check out it. Flash Hauler. Go to Flash Hauler, F-L-A-S-H-O-L-R.com. Thanks to the great people here at Othello's Italian Restaurant. Remember, they've got another one of those Sicily wine and dinner pairings, a big five or six or eight course deal coming up at their location in Norman on August 29th, Tuesday, August 29th, 6.30 p.m. Uh, go to Othello's uh, on the website or on Facebook. You can look it all up and call Othello's, and they'll give you all the information. And you'll be able to sign up to go check out this incredible Sicilian Italian meal. There, I guess it's a Sicilian meal, not Italian, because it's Sicily. So go over there and check it out. And uh, <laughs> I remember, too, they got the location we're at right now at Othello's in Edmond. So I guess yeah. that'll... It's That'll a, pretty well wrap it up. We better get the hell out of here. I man. think so. <laughs> we got to get out of here. Remember, when you go out to do what you do, do it like we do. Yeah. Do it like Jack and Ron, for God's sake. Be uh, the best at what you do. Give it uh, 110, 120, 130% effort. Like Jack and Ron, go out there, give it hell. Bye-bye, everybody. Good.